Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about the OSI model and I'm going to give you a high level look at the seven different layers and give a visual representation of what's happening when data is transmitted. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for exciting future videos coming soon. Now let's begin! So why is the OSI model so important? Well, vendors and manufacturers use the OSI model as a guide to ensure that any products and software that are created can interoperate. It's also important because it gives a clear overview of the functions of a network or a communication system. OSI stands for Open Systems Intercommunication and is made up of seven different layers. Layer 1, or the physical layer, has the function of activating, maintaining, and deactivating a physical circuit between communicating devices over a physical medium. It's responsible for providing commonality between the cable, for example, and the network interface card in the host. Layer 2, or the data link layer, specifies how multiple hosts on the same network can communicate and is also responsible for the transfer of data over the physical channel. Layer 3, or the network layer, specifies how the host on one network can communicate to a host on another network and it's responsible for maintaining the quality of service requested by the transport layer, or layer four. It provides logical addressing, subnet separation, and routing between networks. Now layer four, like I just mentioned, is the transport layer. It's responsible for using transmission protocols like TCP and UDP to transmit data. Don't worry, we'll cover TCP and UDP in a separate section. Now layer five is the session layer. The session layer is responsible for setting up, maintaining, and terminating communication sessions between hosts, and it's used for setting the characteristics of the session. So for example, full duplex or half duplex. Next is layer six, or the presentation layer. It's where data encryption occurs. It's responsible for ensuring that data is in a usable format, so that we're talking the same language, basically. Our final layer, or layer seven, is the application layer. It's responsible for the support of end user applications. Each of these layers plays a different part in how data is transferred. Of the seven layers we just listed, those are going to be broken into two different groups. Layers one through four define how data is transmitted end to end, and layers five through seven relate to the applications and how they're going to communicate. There are a few OSI model mnemonics out there, and you should use the one that you're most likely to remember. But the one that I learned in school and the one I'm going to share with you guys today is please do not throw sausage pizza away. It might be an odd thing to say or an odd thing to remember, but it's the best thing for me to remember the layers. So now let me give you an analogy for the OSI model. Keep in mind while I'm telling you this story that network traffic flows both ways. Let's imagine you're sending out a birthday gift to one of your friends. They live in another country. You put the address info on the package and you put it in your mailbox or the local Dropbox, whatever it may be. From this point forward, I'm guessing you don't really think about what's going on behind the scenes. You just hand off your package and assume it's going to get delivered. Similarly, when you're using the internet and sending an email, something along those lines, you're probably not thinking about what's really happening behind the scenes. So let's relate the seven layers of the OSI model to our shipping analogy. We'll start with the source. You are the application layer. You put a gift, the presentation, into a box or the session, and you write the recipient's address on the outside, put it in your mailbox. From there, the postal carrier, or the transport, picks up the package and takes it to the local shipping company, or the network. They then look at the address, the data layer, and they ship it as required, the physical layer. Whether it can be an airplane, a boat, a car, a train, they're going to choose the most efficient route. Once the package arrives at your friend's local shipping company, the same thing happens in reverse. The package is unloaded from the plane, they then look at the address, give it to the appropriate mail person, they then bring the package to your friend's address where your friend opens the package and pulls out the contents. I hope that this has given you another way to imagine the OSI model and think about what's really happening behind the scenes of your network. Thanks for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell down below. And don't forget, advancing with us is advancing your future. Have a good one.